Just one question regarding your um, keynote, because I think it is very interesting. Other relations with nature, this is what you mentioned. You started quoting Descartes. Um, you said that we lost the um, in-depth relationship uh, with nature through the process of uh, modernization, of industrialization. But what does it look like in detail, the love or with nature? Maybe you could give us uh, some examples, because there are people who say rivers are cleaner in Germany, uh, unlike uh, in the 1970s, uh, they don't uh, stink any longer, they're not that dirty, we don't read about the destruction of the forest any longer. What about the ozone uh, hole, etc.? What, what is the love of nature? What should it look like in detail? Well, um, as usual, you can compare it with the love between two people. If I start loving someone, something changes inside myself, or I decide myself, this is the person to be, then I um, turn my glance towards this person. And if you look away from the person you love, this is a bad idea. You, you will realize this in your love relationship. It will be more difficult if you don't consider the person, if you don't look at the person. And with regard to the love of nature, uh, it is similar. You need to look at nature. What is the current season? Sometimes you, if you live in a big city, you need to ask yourself, um, what is the current season? Maybe you need to go um, on the, to the countryside and go to a lake or go to a park in order to see uh, what the current season actually is. What is part and parcel of the season? In winter, say, this is a beautiful season as well. Uh, should you have a grape harvest in winter? We go to the supermarket in winter time and we buy grapes, but this does not belong to this season, not in Europe in any case. If I buy uh, grapes in the supermarket in winter time, uh, that means that these grapes were produced somewhere were very far away. So you need to be very attentive. You need to uh, take the uh, loved thing or person into consideration and ask yourself, what do you do with uh, the loved one? So you have to consider it. You have to be closer to nature, um, go somewhere to nature, what is happening in nature, uh, nature to um, be more considerate in using technology. This is what you said at the beginning. You said we only have the ecological problems due to the uh, bad use of technology. And then I would like to point out another thing that you mentioned, ecological um, art of living means considerations, reflections, but no st standards, no telling other people what they are supposed to do. And I suppose this is also linked to making compromises every now and again. And maybe I, as a facilitator, can use another word. Compromise is a beautiful description uh, for uh, something that other people uh, need uh, call renunciation. And uh, the uh, ecological movement has to uh, struggle with this because it doesn't sound very sexy. Martin Unfried, I mentioned the most important point of the keynote. What do you think about it? What comes into your mind? Well, first of all, I think about the understanding of nature. I'm very skeptical if this will really make us make headway um, in the complex, complex question of how we should deal. Let me give you the name of uh, Reinhold Mesmer. He's a fantastic um, natural person, uh, climbs mountains, but I suppose he um, spends uh, uh, many hours on plane. He has to um, travel thousands of kilometers by plane so as to reach the Himalaya. So the question is what I can do in my personal life, what are the options I've got in a society of consumption. But in any case, it's an interesting point that you raised. You mentioned something that was fantastic. That's the question or the issue about the apples. To me, um, this is an expression of a very amateur-like discussion we've had for many years. That's the question, what can I do as an individual? What should I do? What shall I do? So as to find an exit strategy for myself. And here I've um, been involved in a lot of discussion where people said, well, coffee um, might be an option, or to have short showers, or um, by organic uh, ecological uh, electricity. Here we're in a state of an amateur-like discussion where there is fragmentation, where it is difficult to differentiate between people's priorities and meaningful things, and uh, on the other hand, where there are problematic things, where things are not um, that important if I do something for my ecological uh, carbon footprint or not. And we should discuss this in a more professional way, I think. We should discuss what is really important for the individuals. 
what uh, can make a difference. So we should put this in relation to uh, politicians. I'm a political scientist, and although I want to be someone who has a good ecological art of living and I think is something positive, uh, the political arena or the political part is huge. Uh, if we uh, manage to have an ecological policy, we will manage a lot of things. But next to the political um, side, I think we need a bottom-up approach uh, that is the society needs to kick a lot of things and every individual needs to do something. But this is something that needs to be discussed as well. The relationship uh, between the personal things, the art of living and what uh, kind of an impact this can have, this must be put in a relation to the political issues which uh, already exist. And even if the old left-wingers say this is not, um, not not worth anything, this personal system, uh, this is the personal thing, it's the system that is important. And then you've got the uh, other groups of people, low house, who say, forget politics, we only buy organic and green products, and then we can save the world. And these are the two extremes. And we need to clarify where there are the functions of these two areas. Let's stay with the individual and his or her priorities. OK, it might be amateur to go and say, I will just buy the apple from around the corner. So this doesn't get us forward. But what matters? What is important? Where can I change things? Now, this is also about the indicators, like the CO2 computer. I mean, I don't know whether you've ever calculated your CO2 footprint. I don't think um, the CO2 meter makes sense at all, because it applies categories which don't give me a clue. I mean, you go and ask people how much um, electricity do you um, use per year, and they don't have a clue. So indicators could be um, a certain amount of electricity you use in your household, and which should consist of uh, renewables, and then how much heat or heating do you need. So it's not like, do you have a hybrid system? or not, but how much fuel do you need, like 400 kilowatt hours fossil electricity or 200 kilograms, for example? I mean, if I then go and say, why don't you go for 50 percent renewables in your household, I'm at talking at a much more concrete level than people can decide whether they want to go for it or not. And there is also a moment in which I don't care whether a person has a hybrid engine in his car or not, because it's much better to have a regular engine and just go 100 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers per year than having a hybrid engine and um, go 40,000. Now, this is about the details, and indeed, I mean, is the CO2 meter worthwhile, and what technology do I opt for? I mean, does it make sense to keep my old car, or should I rather buy a new one? I mean, the ecological art of living, don't we have to break it down? Don't we have to prioritize? What do you think? Now, I agree to everything what people do on the basis of a bit of sound reflection. So for me, it's important to um, focus on considerate shopping. Others rather focus on the energy they um, use at home. So my priority does not necessarily have to be the priority of others. Now, if you ask me what type of prioritizing would make sense, I'd say that energy is the biggest problem ecology-wise. So it would be good if we focused, first of all, on the question, what amount of energy do I need for what purpose? 
I've been doing this since the 1990s. And for example, in my own home, um, we decided to not buy conventional energy from our public utility anymore but uh, solar energy, because um, BWAC, the then utility in Berlin, offered this as an option. It cost a bit more, but I had a good conscience. I had to travel a lot. I have to travel a lot. I go by plane, and um, I like what I do, but um, I decided to um, equip my household um, with ecological energy completely for heating and for um, other purposes in order to do otherwise things which are probably less ecological. Now, in Germany, we are moving towards a renewable or renewables economy. But this has only been possible because of individuals, and I'm one of them, who already started in the 1970s, who began to be interested in these options and who started to transform their very own lives. I do remember the mueslis, as they were called in the 1970s, and muesli is not only a cereal, um, you enjoy for breakfast. It's um, a general idea of a rather conservative person. And today, it's hard to imagine that in Germany you have breakfast without your muesli. The chancellor can only announce the energy transformation because she hopes to thus win the next election. So the petit bourgeois of the 1970s have, has become a, an agency, an authority in society and politics grows from the bottom, not from the top. Now, I'm living in the Netherlands, and I think power or electricity are an excellent example. And the perception in my country is rather similar to what you um, describe. Now, in the Netherlands, there is no EEG, a Renewables Act, nor other incentives, so people did not go and buy photovoltaic systems and did not go for solar energy, first of all. So you always need intelligent political tools in addition to people's conviction. And then you also so talked about your conscience when you talked about electricity. I mean, the whole debate has been a rather difficult one, also because in advertising you often see um, a slogan which tells you, go buy this car, and then you have a clear conscience, for example. But this is not the reason why people buy products. I buy products because I like them, because they are attractive or sexy, as they say, like an iPad, for example. Now, this is how society works. And the negative impact of the reference to the conscience um, meant a rather negative charge for ecological um, products or concepts like you only drive the three-liter car if you want to have a good conscience. It's not for the product as such, but it's like, well, people feel they should buy it. And this is not about knowledge either. It's also about emotion and interesting mechanisms in a consumer society, and that's what I'm interested in. I'm also interested in uh, to, to know why society tends to, to um, pretend it's much smaller. 
or weaker than it is. You should not ask too much from people. But uh, you may ask something. I mean, 38 um, million people in Germany still buy their um, electricity from corporations that run nuclear energy, in spite of the fact that the majority of the Germans is against nuclear energy. So this is a contradiction. And this is certainly one of the weak spots of the anti-nuclear um, movement, um, which uh, did not tell people there are possibilities. Why don't you use them? Now, please, may I invite you to our fishbowl? If you want to say something, why don't you come up front and sit in one of the chairs? I will still try to be the moderator of our round. And I would like to provoke whilst the first um, speakers come up front. Because I think uh, it's too easy to say, well, people start wherever they want to. Some care about food, some care about energy supply. Some want to shower less and um, go by plane more. Others um, sell their car and use the public railway system. This seems to be too voluntary, if I, I'm cons uh, if I may say so. And then the story of the 1970s you told is a bit different, I'd say. I mean, it's not all about individuals, and we do have the solar energy-equipped houses here, whereas in the Netherlands they don't have because of the law, because of legislation. It's not because individuals started to opt for solar energy. I mean, Fukushima is the reason why all of a sudden everybody is against um, nuclear power, and all of a sudden people um, buy their electricity from um, non-nuclear energy utilities. It took a long time until people decided to invest for um, eco-farming, but then the Red Green government sponsored the project and the whole process accelerated. Now, when the new energy law was adopted, people learned about new energies and companies were set up, and then people went and bought solar energy. These um, companies were um, found in the 1990s, in the mid-1990s. So, the companies were set up because there was the demand, and the Red Green government was much later. And it still took time before it passed the law, so you should not turn things around. First, there was the demand, and then there were voters. I mean, the Red Green Coalition was elected by people who knew what they were doing, and they knew that if they would vote for the Green Party, they'd green policy. So the arbitrariness you mentioned exists, but it's sufficient. And in some, it produces something the whole country benefits from. And by the way, how do you want to do away with the arbitrariness? I mean, do you want to stand in front of the people and tell them, now, listen, this is ecological and the rest is prohibited. I mean, this is an illusion and it's not possible and we don't want it that way. So why don't we go on? Why don't we furthermore do what we have been doing so far in a rather liberal approach? And things change when people do things, not when they just go and announce things. Now, a ban, prohibition would not be 
the um, alternative option. I mean, I remember 30 years ago, people just put their fridges in the forest when they did not need them anymore. I mean, people know about recycling today, and nobody puts his or her fridge in the forest anymore in order to get rid of it and produce your electricity on your roof. I guess this is going to be a normal um, procedure, a meta, of course, in a few years to come. And also with respect to ecological products and the efficiency of the letter. I mean, people will see their neighbors buy products and do things, and thus they will go and do it. So there is an avant-garde who does it without uh, preaching to others, without uh, referring to the good or bad conscience of others. But uh, it's part of an overall process. However, your conscience will matter. You see your conscience as a moral thing, but conscience is like awareness about something you are aware of. And if I'm aware of something and act accordingly, I have a good conscience. It's not easy to find out what you hold true. It requires a bit of an effort. And this is the way you get a conscience. Right, but we do have this debate. I mean, like, I have to be a good guy in order to do this or that. No, sorry, you are having this debate. I'm not having this debate. Now, for 15 years, people have been telling me, OK, that's right, that's good. Good, but uh, I committed a sin. I, I took a plane in order to travel um, for my holidays. I mean, and that's the, the very uh, classical uh, approach. I mean, people think it's about sinning.